You probably have seen these massive dino ribs on social media and thought, wow, those were probably made by the blood, sweat, and tears of a seasoned pit master. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is not the case. In fact, although dino beef plate ribs are considered by many as the best item in barbecue, that's barbecue right there, man. It's actually the easiest one to cook. And more importantly, you can cook incredible beef ribs on any cooker you have at home. So before you can cook beef ribs, of course you need to buy them. And believe it or not, this is actually the most difficult part of this entire process. The first reason is they are very hard to identify if you don't know what to look for. So there are two types of beef short ribs that you can buy at the store normally. And these would be the beef chuck short ribs and the beef plate short ribs. The dino ribs that we're cooking today and also the ones that you see on social media and at your favorite barbecue joint are beef plate ribs. And the easiest way to identify them is to count the bones. So butchered plate Plate ribs have three bones and butchered chuck ribs have four bones, at least in every instance I've seen. So make sure you get the name right and make sure you count the bones before you buy your ribs. But if you can only get a hold of beef chuck short ribs, then no worries because this recipe will work just as well with those. The second difficulty is that beef plate ribs are kind of hard to find and they're pretty expensive. I live in the South where barbecue is pretty much everywhere and I have not seen a pack of full beef plate short ribs from any grocery store I've been to. And online, the price is around $65 to $80 at the cheapest I've seen, which is why I got my dino ribs from Porter Road. So I have had Porter Road beef multiple times and every single time I am blown away by the quality. And since the price point is just about the same as everywhere I've looked, I think they're the best place to buy them from. Now, Porter Road did send me these ribs, but I kid you not, if they had rejected my proposal for this video and didn't send me the ribs, I fully intended to buy from them. So if you guys need beef ribs or any cut of meat and you wanna help support the channel, then make sure to check out Porter Road using my affiliate link in the description box. Okay, so now on to trimming. So there are two steps that I recommend you do and I'll explain why I recommend them in just a moment. But these steps are completely optional. So if you wanna open up your pack of ribs, put some seasoning on them and put them in the cooker, I promise they will still turn out great. But for those of you who want to follow my advice, my first recommendation is that you take off any meat on the fat cap. If you look at the profile of this specific rack of plate ribs, you'll notice that there's a thin patch of meat that's sitting on the fat cap. So while these ribs are cooking, that patch of meat will slowly shrink, exposing the fat that's underneath it. And in some cases, that meat will just slip off the rendered fat near the end of the cook. And the fat that gets exposed because of this will not have any seasoning on it, and it will just be a much less pleasurable bite. And with that, I need to make a quick disclaimer, because not every rack will have this patch of meat. And some racks will actually have the fat cap already completely taken off. So if you don't pay attention and you just start hacking away like Edward Scissorhands, you're gonna be left with very little meat and a very miserable dinner. The second thing I recommend you do is to score the membrane on the back of the ribs because if you don't while the ribs are cooking the membrane starts to shrink and basically that's gonna pull the bones together and then by the end of the cook your rack of ribs ends up looking like Shaquille O'Neal's toes now the ribs will still taste the same whether you score the ribs or you don't this is merely for presentation so it's not necessary at all but to score it you can either make lines on the back or you can do a big giant X like Goldie's barbecue does in Texas it really doesn't matter also some racks actually have the membrane removed already and you can tell if it's already removed if you look at the back of the ribs and it doesn't have the shine that the membrane gives off. But if you can't tell, then I say just score it because scoring it if it's already taken off won't do anything. Let's talk seasoning. So I've noticed that the fat on a beef rib is a lot harder than the fat that's on a brisket. And because of this, it's a lot harder for the rub to stick to the beef rib. Because of this, I recommend that you use a binder to make sure that you get a nice even coat of your rub. You can literally use anything hot sauce, mustard, Worcestershire sauce. Heck, you can even use water, it really doesn't matter. But I'm using dark mushroom soy sauce because I really like it and I have it on hand. Now, like I always say, seasoning does not matter. Just use what you like but just be careful with the amount of salt that you use, especially if you use pepper, salt, and a barbecue rub with added salt like I'm using today. Beef short ribs can take a good amount of salt, but I have definitely oversalted a rack or two in my day, so just be careful. Off the top of my head, I would say use about half as much as you would use for a brisket in grams. And no worries if you have no idea how much that is, because I'll have a calculation in the description to help you estimate. Also, like Harry Sue always says, 
never rub your rub because the seasoning and the binder will basically mix together and form a paste that will prevent the bark from forming on your ribs. Just sprinkle and pat. And just like that, these ribs are ready for the pit. And today I'm using my Camp Chef Woodwind Pellet Grill because I can't tend the fire today because clearly I'm working. Didn't you notice the spreadsheets in the background this whole time? But if you're using a charcoal grill to cook your plate ribs, I'll have a video linked in the description box where I use a Weber Smoky Mountain. But I caution you, this was one of the first videos I ever posted on my channel. So my cringe cringe fruit model barbecue hadn't awakened yet, so it's pretty awkward. Just a fair warning. But if you don't have a smoker, you can also just put it in your oven. I mean, a pellet grill is basically just an oven with smoke. So of course you're not gonna get smoke flavor on your ribs if you use your oven. But if you put some homemade barbecue sauce on top of your oven ribs, I bet they'll be really good. Also, if you're using your oven, make sure to put your ribs on a rack and not directly on the cooking sheet because you wanna be able to get a good crust on your ribs. And also put a deep foil pan on the second rack to collect any juice that could spill off of your cooking sheet and start a grease fire. But anyways, I have my Camp Chef pellet smoker set to 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 107 centigrade. And I put them on my second rack to keep them as far away from the heat source as possible. But if you don't have a second rack, you can always just put them on the first rack and then cook them at 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees centigrade. And I'm just gonna leave these alone for a few hours and then I'll show you guys how you can tell when they're done. Okay, so it's been many hours and I am intentionally not telling you how much time has passed because we do not go by time, we go by signs. So the first thing is we want to feel the fat on the top of the ribs. And we want this super rendered. We want it to feel really soft and even sticky in some spots. Next, we wanna make sure that the collagen has completely broken down. And you'll know when this happens by picking up the ribs and flexing them to feel for tenderness. They should feel nice and jiggly when you do this. I'm using nitrile gloves with cotton liners, but if you don't have those, you can always just use oven mitts and wrap those in foils and it'll pretty much do the same thing. Once it's done, just wrap Put it in foil and let it rest until the temperature reaches to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And once rested, slice and enjoy the beautiful cross section of your tender beef ribs. So like I said, a super easy cook. And if you have a dinner party you're hosting or if you wanna wow people at your next Friendsgiving or Christmas party, this recipe will absolutely knock your friends and family socks off. So beef ribs are definitely high up on my list of the best barbecue items, but for me, brisket is still the king. But unfortunately, it's probably the hardest thing to barbecue. Luckily, I know how to make smoking a brisket a super easy process and still be incredibly delicious. So make sure to watch the next video on your screen to find out how, and I'll see you guys there.